Hello, welcome to Uncle Cthulhu Reviews. So it's a day after Cannonade. Yesterday I had a great day. It felt like Cannonade this year was much bigger than Cannonade of previous years. Certainly they had the extra Wii run which War Games Foundry set up. But even what uh, the sort of games run upstairs felt like it had more stuff in. And certainly the crowd at 10 o'clock felt bigger than previous years. I think I heard somewhere that there were at least 900 people paying to get in, plus all the club hangers on that had turned up for games and events and traders and stuff. Really good day. So I got myself a mighty haul. So I thought I'd go through the haul that I uh, picked up. I grabbed a load of bargains and got a load of stuff for traders I wanted to get picked up. So first up, my Offspray Horde. These were a bargain price of two quid a piece. Um, a lot of these. So a couple of them from the uh, American History, which I love. Uh, I've got some stuff I'm doing, Rome versus Carthage and Allies, basically all the stuff from Rob Total War. So I've got like a Gallic army, an ancient British army, Spanish army, Numidian army, Carthage army, Roman army as well. So I can do Allies and main forces, six mil, so a bit of reference material for that. Um, two pound for a campaign book, Hastings, what's not to love. Another one. And book on the Box of Rebellion. More of later. So I also managed to pick up another book. Again, a couple of quid. Horizon Wars, six mil sort of war game and grand scale. I like the I like the Offspring books. Pretty well done. I like that work. And I always love raking through a new set of rules. So big purchase for the day were Blitzkrieg Commander. So me and Martin. Saw this with the uh, Pendracken guys, heard a lot of stuff about it. So I picked up the rules and I got the British Desert Army. I also bought a couple of extra wee things after Martin bought a couple of tigers for his Africa core. So we both got a rule book, we both got an army pack. Pendracken were doing 75 quid for the rules and two army packs. So we got two rule books, two army packs, uh, 50 quid each, which uh, looks pretty cool. And rather than go for the square bases, we bought ourselves some round bases to put stuff on. I think squad stuff where you're dealing with sort of irregular formations rather than sort of Napoleonic or earlier where you got ranked up, I much prefer on round bases. So we've we've took the we took the decision to mount everything on round bases. So speaking from Pendracken, I also picked up the uh, 10 mil American Civil War, so the Confederates for them, so a couple of packs of marching Confederates, a couple of packs of command, and some state flags. Now this was really good, because um, they don't always stock take uh, individual packs to show us, and I was bunged up with cold, and I missed the order deadline to get it in, so I, I knocked them off an email on Saturday saying, look, I'm really sorry, I've missed your order deadline, I know you guys are busy, is there any chance you can send them to the show, and yet, no bother, one of the reasons I like Pendragon. And getting the flags for Confederates, I think I've got some of the standard Confederate battle flag, the uh, battle flag of the Army of North Virginia. Uh, so I've got the state flags as well, which precipitated a bit of a conversation about using stuff like swastikas or the Confederate flag in Wargaming, which I've got plans to do a video for later. So what else? Oh, from Pendragon, I bought a bulk buy of 20 by 20 mil bases so these are to finish off my American Civil War I'm mounting them on 20 by 20 bases uh, I'm also going to rebase my American War of Independence on 20 by 20 bases now traditionally I wouldn't have used MDF bases because my models were stored in the garage and the garage wasn't exactly weather tight so they got a bit damp and a bit musty but now I've got dry storage in the attic and I've got some nice boxes to store everything in that shouldn't be an issue so yeah Bulk by that should last us a while. So I also picked up some terrain pieces from the baggage train. So some uh, six ten mil sort of log field works. Um, a ten mil Viking Saxon house uh, set. Now I'm actually not going to use the bigger ones, but I'm going to use the smaller buildings in there and probably 
use them as a, I mean, they're meant to be sheds in 10 mil, but I'm probably going to use them as huts for a barbarian village for that six mil uh, ancients, which I was talking about earlier. I've got a, a six mil Roman temple. Every board, I think, needs a, a temple centerpiece to fight over. And I got some Middle Eastern buildings as well. I've got fighting in North Africa, Carthage. I, I figured they'd look the piece. So there's more. I uh, picked up this from the flea market. It's a Salute 2019 figure. It's some sort of post-apocalyptic sci-fi woman with some sort of lizard on a leash. Uh, then I got Callistra. Now I only actually wanted three blister packs from Callistra. But they do the six pound a piece, or if you get six, it's a fiver a piece. So I've got uh, Iron Brigade. So my Union Army in 10 mil is Callistra. My Confederate is mainly Pendraken. So I've got my Iron Brigade. Something a bit different. The bulk of my stuff is regular stuff, but I do like to do like a unit of Iron Brigade, unit of Zwabs. If I need uh, to identify an elite unit, I can do. A couple of command stuff. I probably only needed one command, but I thought I'd do extra command. And the extra command means that if I'm going to use a different set of rules, and I'm only needing, say, three bases for a brigade battalion, having extra commands mean I can do that. More artillery, because I only have one group of artillery, so that takes my Union and Confederate artillery to a parry. I've got an extra one as well. That was for inspiration. And I've got horse holders for my cavalry when they dismount. So that was my Callistra Hall. Uh, I found some flintlock stuff in the bring and buy flea market. So it's basically the starter set from Shark's Rifles. So it's I've got Shark's Rifles and the French. So in case you don't know, Flintlock is Napoleonic figures, but the Orcs are the British, the Elves are the French, and you've got a few other allied armies in there, like uh, uh, Dwarves of the Prussians. Uh, for my science fiction survivor games, I managed to find some Grenadier Future Warriors, so nine figures. Looks quite nice, painting them up. They also do for my Johnny Alpha stuff. I uh, bought some individual figures from 4A miniatures. So there's a, like a bouncer figure. Um, I can't believe it's not anti from Mad Max. You see that? And I got a, can't believe he's not Conan figure. Now that's from a pal, Lewis, who picked me up a Wehrmacht Hussy from uh, Beltfred Gaiman, uh, Colonel Bills at the Dumfries show, so I'll, I'll take him down a Conan figure. And whilst I was chatting to the guy at 4A, he's like, oh, have you seen this range? If you have to Mad Max futuristic figures. And he pulled this figure out of a box of shows. Hopefully it'll zoom in. And uh, he says, ah, you can have that for a quid. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Thank you very much. So yeah, 4A, knocking it out the park there. Other thing I picked up, Sort of a big thing, actually I'm starting out, I've always been obsessed with, I wouldn't say obsessed, but I've always been interested in the Boxer Rebellion. So I went to the old Glory guys, and I picked up some Boxer Rebellion stuff. It's just a start, and it's just a scratch, scratch a bit of an itch, so what did I get? So I got uh, two packs of boxers, so that's 60 figures, so with rifles and with swords, so we'll get those painted up. The defence of the legation quarter peaking um, always fascinated me. I, I read a really great article in War Games Illustrated about it. I wanted to see the difference between the Old Glory models and the Lancaster game models. And I think I prefer the depth of the range and the, the figures from the uh, Old, Old Glory. Well, it's Blue Moon distributed by Old Glory. So I got myself um, the Nordfeld gun, which was a type of machine gun, which they had in the legation defense great power personalities uh, a wee pack of raw marine uh, raw marine british raw marines and us marines as well because the legation was defended by marines and and sailors there were very few sort of army troops um so and the last thing i got is a bit of a beast actually it's the from the bring and buy total Battle Systems 
uh, shanty town. So there's a, a mat and a whole load of stuff still on the sprues, stuff in the boxes. So this is kind of like coloured printed card that kind of goes together and, and makes like a shanty town. So it's like a watchtower. And this is, I thought it would be really cool for me with my post-apocalyptic skirmish stuff. Which, that will all fit in there very nicely. And uh, the Johnny Alpha Rogue um, Strontium Dogs game I've got. I can use it for a few different things. And yeah, I, I thought it was really good. So that was my haul from Canon Aid. I'm going to be doing some in-depth stuff on Blitzkrieg version... Uh, yeah, Blitzkrieg Commander version 4 uh, this week. But I just thought I'd get that shown off so I don't forget about anything. And uh, yeah, it's a lovely day today. I've got a bit of a long drive ahead, so I'm, I'm going to be thinking about uh, the... The video I was talking about about the representation of say Confederate battle flags and, and swastikas in wargaming. But other than that, you have a great day. You enjoy your Sunday. If you went to Canon and you got some cool stuff, let us know what you got. I love seeing and talking about miniatures. But anyway, that's me over for now. You have a great day and I look forward to seeing you again. Goodbye.